What does the jerk tell us? Nothing good. The brain's losing control of the body. Can't order the eyes to focus, regulate sleep patterns, or control muscles. A movement disorder or degenerative brain disease. Either way, this kid's gonna be picking up his diploma and diapers in a wheelchair. Maybe not that bad. Could be an infection. You wish. No fever, no white count. Anyone think this differential diagnosis might be compromised because we don't have an accurate family history? I took an accurate family history. You didn't even take an accurate family. His father's not his father. Why would you say that? 30% of all dads out there don't realize they're raising someone else's kid. From what I've read, false paternity is more like 10%. That's yeah, what our moms would like us to believe. Who cares? If he got it from his parents, they'd both be dead by now. Can we get on with the differential diagnosis? 50 bucks says I'm right. I'll take your money. Hit a nerve? Don't worry for him. And I'm sure the guy who tucked you in at night was your daddy. Make it 100. What about leukoencephalopathy in a 16-year-old? It doesn't necessarily have to be that bad. If we exclude the night terrors, it could be something systemic. Is liver, kidneys, something outside the brain? Yes. Feel free to exclude any symptom if it makes your job easier. The night terrors were anecdotal. He could have had a bad dream. No. Parents said he was conscious during the event and didn't remember anything afterwards. That's a night terror. Parents said? Good point. Before we condemn this kid, maybe we should entertain Dr. Chase's skepticism. I want a detailed polysomnograph if he's having night terrors. I want to see them. Security checked the videotapes from all perimeter cameras. He's still got to be in the hospital. Where's Chase? Main floor. OK, you take the cafeteria and administration. I'll hit the research annex and work my way back to you. Dan, you okay? There are experimental treatments, ongoing research. Who knows what they'll discover in a year or two. This is where I dropped the ball. Dan, we're standing on the roof of the hospital. Dan. Dan, you're not on the field. He doesn't know where he is. There, Foreman. Dan. Dan? Dan, no! Dan! Anybody tell a family that their boy almost stepped off a roof? They must be thrilled. They're not suing, but I think only because Chase asked them. Why does everybody always think I'm being sarcastic? This is great news. He doesn't have MS. Parents should be thrilled. Well, the mom, anyway. Of course, the dad probably doesn't know. Why doesn't he have MS? He was on the roof thinking he was on all the cross field, conscious, and therefore not a night terror. You want some of this? Yeah, sure. He was in an acute, confusional state. It doesn't fit with a demyelinating disease like MS. Oh, look at clonal bands. We're real. They just mean something other than MS. So what are they telling us? Uh, the immune system is working? Right. He has an infection in his brain. What about sex? Well, it might get complicated. I mean, we work together. I'm older, certainly, but maybe you like that. I meant maybe his neurosyphilis. <laughs> nice cover. Sorry, RPI was negative. We don't need a definitive test to confirm this. Sure. Didn't need one to confirm MS. OK, let's wait for you to run titers on 1,400 viruses while this kid's brain turns to mush. So the fact that he doesn't have MS, it's, it's really not good news after all. Well, it is if it's neurosyphilis. Likelihood of a false negative on an RPR test, 30%. Likelihood of a 16-year-old having sex, roughly 120%. I'll start him on IV penicillin. No, we're not going to wait for that. The most effective way to deliver the drug is right into his brain via the spine. We can't. In a cramped space like the brain, increased intracranial pressure from a high-volume drug like penicillin could herniate his brain stem and kill him. No neurologist in his right mind would recommend that. Show of hands, who thinks I'm not in my right mind? And who thinks I forget this fairly basic neurological fact? Who thinks there's a third option? Very good. What's the third choice? No idea. You just asked if I thought there was one. The patient has a shunt in his brain. There'll be no increased pressure. We can put as much penicillin into his body as we want. Excellent. Inject him through a lumbar puncture. <laughs> the treatment should start helping soon. Let us know if it gets easier to focus on things, remember stuff. Hey, Dan. Isn't Dr. Cameron's necklace a beauty? Something South American, I think. Yeah, Guatemalan. <laughs> It's a cool necklace. Thank you so much. The kid's in pain. <laughs> Don't fight it. Just let it happen. No. You'll be dead no what? Two days. I give it a day. Dan? Not you okay? Dan? Night terror. 
Body decomposition once he's in the grave. So you find your body. He's hearing voices. It's all over. Welcome to the thing. That's You're a dead man. Push two milligrams IV out of our stack. Come on, Dan. Auditory hallucination shows further brain degeneration. Penicillin is not working. So either it's a bad batch of penicillin or our diagnosis is wrong. Square one. Midnight. LFTs, BUN, and creatinine are all normal. Diabetes is out and no gap. There goes metabolic. MRA rules up escalitis. I for inflammation. Too young for anything degenerative. D, see ya. And for neoplastic. MRI was clean. I for inflammation. We already did that. Stupid to have two eyes and one mnemonic. What's the other one? Infection. Ugoclonal bands still have to mean something. But no fevers. White counts elevated, but within range. We must test it for anything remotely possible. Everything is negative. CT scan rolls out subdural. Trauma. Later, much. You know the problem? Midnight is actually spelled with a G and an H. You just figure out what those letters stand for. It's a sick brain having fun, torturing him, talking to him. Scaring the hell out of him. Get him an EEG, left and right EOG esophageal microphones. This thing wants to talk. Let's listen. General Hospital is on channel six. Dan's brain's not showing channel six right now, only mush. No epileptiform activity. What are you doing? Waiting for CBC and Chem 7. Good. Run DNA on these. What's this? Parents coffee cups. I can't believe I've you... I've had this conversation once already. If you've got something else to do, do it. Otherwise, do this. Mosquitoes passing through Jersey in December. No Eastern Equine encephalitis. You guys are going to believe this. What's that? House is right. The father's not the father. <sighs> Dude doubled up on me. You're not going to believe this. The mother's not the mother either. It's not a good idea to move your son in his condition. We just want a second opinion. I need an answer. You idiots. You lied to me. We didn't lie about anything. You, on the other hand, accused us of molesting our son. Perfect. Couldn't we get off my scorps and focus on theirs? Theirs is bigger. You're not Dan's parents. We're his parents. He was adopted. He doesn't need to know. I do. Adoption makes us just as much Listen, as... Listen, when we were taking his medical history, were you confused? Did you think we were looking for a genetic clue to his condition, or did you think we were trying to ascertain who loves him the most in the whole wide world? How did you find out about this? I sampled their DNA. We would give you any DNA. Your coffee cups from the cafeteria. You can't do that. Again, why are we getting hung up on what I did? Your medical history is useless. No, we gave you a detailed history of his biological mother. Her history. Non-smoker, good health, low cholesterol, no blood pressure problems. Dan was adopted two weeks after he was born. You have his history. There's nothing you need to know that we didn't tell you. Sounds reasonable. Well, if you want to transfer your boy, that is your choice. I still think it's wrong. Was she vaccinated? The biological mother, when she was a baby, did she get her vaccinations? Dan was vaccinated at six months. Mm-hmm. Do you know why kids get vaccinated at six months? Because before that, they are protected by their biological mother's immune system. So, was she vaccinated? An infant picks up a regular old measles virus. He gets a rash. He's extremely uncomfortable, has a wicked fever, but he lives. Here's the kicker. Once every million or so times, the virus mutates. Instead of Dan having a fever and a rash, the virus travels to his brain and hides like a time bomb. In this case, for 16 years. Subacute sclerosis and panencephalitis. I know. There's only been 20 cases in the United States in the last 30 years. I suppose you can make an argument the kid's still in stage one. Once SSPE moves to stage two, it's... boom. Stage two is universally fatal.